Are you a new programmer getting started with Arduino? I've got seven tips here to get you on the fast track. Let's jump right in. Subscribe to our YouTube channel to get more videos like this. Tip one, algorithm first. Now this is not just Arduino specific, this is any programming language specific. It's like when you're a new programmer, you just wanna jump in and start typing code. I get it because I love writing code too. But the best place to start your new program is actually with a pencil and paper. What you can do is write down what your program's gonna do step by step. When you're doing this, you're essentially writing the algorithm. Once you know what it is you need your code to do, then you can actually go and implement that algorithm into your Arduino code. Now you might be like, oh my gosh, this is such an easy sketch to write. I don't need to waste my time writing out an algorithm. And that might be true. With a simple sketch that you have in mind, maybe you don't have to, but you're gonna be amazed at what pops out if you take the time to write your algorithm first. Tip two, know these Arduino input, output, and serial functions cold. Now I'm not into rote memorization, mostly because I can't remember anything, but it is important to be aware of these functions. So the digital input output functions are for controlling the digital pins, and you'd use, be using functions digital read, digital write, and pin mode. So this would be for controlling things like LEDs and perhaps reading inputs from say a button press. Now the analog functions you should know are analog read and analog write, and those things would be for like reading in from some type of sensor, like maybe a temperature sensor, or reading from a potentiometer, and analog write, let's say you wanna fade an LED or adjust the speed of a motor or something like that. And then the serial functions you wanna be aware of are serial begin, serial print, and serial print line, and what those allow you to do is print out information at key points in your sketch so you can kind of understand the, how the flow is working kind of debug along the way as you're programming. The best place to learn more about these is on the Arduino reference page. We'll link to that in the description. We also have videos on just about every one of these functions. So check out our YouTube channel or our website for more information on that. I don't know about you, but when I find a useful piece of code online, I usually bookmark it in my browser so I can find it again. But the problem is finding it again in my bookmarks is pretty hit or miss. I mean, I've got a ton of bookmarks and I try to categorize them smart. You know, usually like I'm doing something else though, like solving a coding problem. And I just don't really have the time to categorize them like I should. I actually have a little fairy tale that plays in my brain every time I save a little code bookmark. It goes something like this. Someday I'll organize all my coding bookmarks. I have a feeling though that day will never actually arrive. What I really need is some kind of auto magic tagging organizer app that can save all these different pieces of code with the click of a hotkey and then just allow me to find them when I actually need them. So that's why I started using pieces. It's an application built by developers for developers that helps you keep track of all your code snippets without screwing up your workflow. Using pieces is insanely simple on the web. You just highlight any code or text and then right click or use a keyboard shortcut to save to pieces. Or just hover over any code and click the pieces save button. It literally takes less than a second. What's really cool is not only does it save the code, but it saves the URL of where you got the code. So you've got like context to go with it. It auto detects the type of language and it categorizes it for you. That's pretty cool. But where it gets really nice is being able to quickly find that code inside your IDE of choice. I use VS Code quite a bit and the pieces extension allows me to save and insert code snippets right inside the IDE. So instead of searching through some old project for that piece of code I know I use all the time, I just save it to pieces and then auto insert it. They even have an auto save feature that automatically saves code snippets that you frequently type. Getting started with pieces is simple. Just go to pieces.app to download for your PC or Mac and then install the plugins wherever you find yourself coding or looking for code. That is pieces.app to download this free software. Tip three, find an example sketch. So one of the great things about Arduino is that it's got a huge community and tons of people write example sketches. Often if you need to do something, you can find an example sketch that's gonna kind of be along the lines of what you need to do. One great place to find example code is right inside the Arduino IDE. All you do is go to File and then Examples. 
Here you can find examples for all the basic Arduino functions and many of your pre-installed Arduino libraries. Tip four, incremental design always. So I would highly recommend doing one small thing at a time, and that goes for code and for circuits. So you don't wanna like wire up two circuits and then test that they both work. You wanna wire up one circuit, test that that one circuit works, then add a second circuit and test that that works too. Maybe you're building like a wireless temperature sensor. That's cool. So first, use a simple example sketch to test that you can actually read the temperature probe all by itself, no Wi-Fi. Then in a separate sketch, totally unrelated, see if you can establish the simplest Wi-Fi connection possible. Make sure that can work. But don't try to do both of those all at the same time. If you begin to have issues, it's hard to pinpoint the specific area. But if you do it one small piece at a time, get that one small piece working. When you try to do it all at once, it makes it far more difficult to identify an issue should one crop up, or should I say when the issues start to crop up. Tip five, verify, verify, verify. So how can you be a better coder? Well, if you find your errors faster, what's a quick way to find an error? Well, it's to test every line of code you write. All right, so my guess is we're all humans here. I mean, maybe you're a cyborg, I don't know, but humans make errors. Regardless of how long you're gonna code, you're always gonna make errors in your code. It doesn't matter. Maybe you'll make less errors as you get more experienced, or maybe you'll make more complicated errors as you get more experience. But one way to code better is to find your errors faster. Well, how do you find your errors faster? Well, what you can do is verify your sketches frequently. So anytime you write a line of code, you can verify it and see if any errors crop up. If you verify frequently, you can catch your errors more quickly and end up with better code. Tip six, naming is more important than you think. Programming requires naming stuff. Anytime you're writing a function or you're creating a variable, you gotta give it a name. And I would say, anytime you're gonna name something, pretend you're naming a baby. Why? Because when you name a baby, you're probably gonna put some mental effort into it. It's important to you. I mean, it's your baby. For programming, we want names to convey useful information. For example, what does the variable name TSBT mean to anybody? Wouldn't temp sensor bottom tank be a whole lot more descriptive? The second one sure gives you a whole lot more detail. And somebody else reading your code might not accidentally think it means tank sensor bottom threshold. Now, a great source for thinking about naming is in a book called Clean Code by Robert C. Martin. Highly recommend you check it out, fantastic book. Tip seven, use functions. If you are brand new to programming an Arduino, you might not be writing your own functions yet, and all your code is right inside like the main loop of Arduino. But writing functions can make your code more concise, easier to read, and simpler to update. So what kind of code should you turn into functions? Well, look for sections of your code that you're repeating often in your sketch. If you find yourself writing the same piece of code over and over again, that might be a good indication that you could turn that piece of code into a function. So if you'd like to get these seven tips plus three more in an easy PDF download, check out our website at programmingelectronics.com forward slash 10 tips. That's programmingelectronics.com forward slash 10 tips. Well, hey, thanks so much for watching. If you've got a tip that you think would be great for Arduino programmers to know, please leave it in the comments. We'd love to hear it. Share it with your fellow programmers. Also, if you're interested in learning more about this Arduino programming stuff, make sure to check out the training program at our website, programmingelectronics.com. Huge shout out to our sponsor, Pieces, for supporting this video. You can check out their software in the link below or just go to pieces.app. That's pieces.app to check out their super useful snippet software that I'm really enjoying using. And I think you'd find handy too. Thanks a ton. Would love if you subscribe to the channel, like the video, all that great stuff. Take it easy.